Hello everyone, and thanks for joining with us for our online worship for this second week of Advent. My name's Gavin, and I offer you all a very warm welcome. Those of you joining us from near and far, the folks in the congregations I serve here in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, and especially anyone who's come across us for the first time today. You might be on your own as you take part in this service, but I hope you know that you are not alone and that you feel a sense of fellowship with all those who are praying with you through this online service. And these prayers and reflections are what I'll be sharing with the folks at Cox Lodge on Sunday morning. Let us pray. Come God with us, who braves our rejection and hurt, who holds us in acceptance and love. Come God for us, who whispers in our ears that we, each of us, are beloved children. Come God beside us, who steadies us when we falter, who lifts us up when we fall. Come God behind us, who picks up all the faded dreams we drop along the way and patchworks them into hope. Come, holy light, and shine in us and through us. God is with us. Alleluia. small in our darkness uncreated light shines through infant eyes God is with us Alleluia God is with us Alleluia. come to save us Bible reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, the ruler of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance 
for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Perhaps you know someone who you might describe as a bit of an eccentric. When we read about John the Baptist, he sounds more than just a little eccentric. He lived in the desert wilderness. He didn't cut his hair or his beard. He wore camel skins, ate locusts, and shouted insults at those in authority. He sounds a bit weird. So why is it that the people flock to this seemingly eccentric man, and not just out of curiosity, but to respond to his message? What was it that drew them to the banks of the River Jordan? Well, I can't be sure, but I think that the message of a new start to people who knew they'd messed up is good news. Because the sense of expectancy that God is going to be at work brings a sense of hope as well as a sense of urgency. And because through this strange and eccentric man, the Spirit of God was at work and was at work in the hearts of those who heard his message, preparing them to receive Jesus. So in this period of Advent, what about us? Are we drawn to the message of John? In John's message, there are two powerful images about what it means to prepare the way for Jesus. Firstly, remove the obstacles, clear the way. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Apparently, when a king went on a journey in the days of John the Baptist, or in the days of Isaiah, who originally spoke these words, he would send his servants out ahead of him to clear the path, to remove any boulders or other obstacles that might get in the way, and to fill in any holes in the path, so that the king's horse and chariot could make a straight and uninterrupted journey to wherever they were going. A number of years ago, I remember watching a documentary on the team attempting to break the world land speed record in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. But before they got the car ready, a team of four or five of them had to walk the entire length of the route that the car would take, about 10 miles. And they had to pick up any stones or pebbles, making sure that the surface was perfectly flat and clear with nothing in the way. Because if it was, then a car running at a few hundred miles an hour would go dangerously off course. John calls us to prepare a straight path for Jesus. But he doesn't mean a physical road for a chariot or a supersonic car. Part of this challenge is to clear a way for Jesus to be at work more fully at the centre of our lives. To ask ourselves what obstacles are in the way of Jesus finding a straight path to our hearts. Perhaps it could be pride, bitterness, anger or resentment. It could be selfishness or greed or dishonesty or stubbornness. Or it could be a 
a lack of gratefulness for the things we have and a constant longing for more. Or perhaps it could be a relationship needing reconciliation, needing us to offer and ask for forgiveness. But maybe some of the obstacles on that metaphorical road are simply things that clutter our busy lives so that we don't make room for Jesus. I wonder if any of you have a garage that's full of junk. How many people keep saying that they must get round to clearing out the garage so they can put the car in there for the winter? And just like so many garages are so full of other things that there is no room for the car they were designed to hold. Are our hearts often so full of other things that there is no room for what they were designed to hold? The love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. But the call to clear the way is not just about our own lives. It's also about the obstacles to justice and peace and equality in our society. And all those things that get in the way of the values of Christ's kingdom. Because the one we are preparing the way for is the one of whom Isaiah says, he will judge the poor fairly and defend the rights of the helpless. He will rule his people with justice and integrity. What does this mean today? For refugees trying to find a path to a safe home, while countries like ours seem to be putting as many obstacles in the path as possible and closing down the safe routes so that the only option is a dangerous sea crossing. Our church's joint public issues team are currently encouraging us to write to our MPs, urging them to support amendments to the Nationality and Borders Bill, which will call for the expanding of safe routes for refugees. So if you'd like a template letter to help you do that. There's a link in the description below this video. So the first challenge this week is to remove the obstacles and clear the way. The second is repentance, an invitation to turn around. John the Baptist was proclaiming a baptism of repentance. While the Greek word for repent means to change your mind about something, John was urging people to come to the river and be baptised as a sign that their change of mind was leading to a complete change in how they live their lives. John was inviting people to turn their lives around, to recognise that they were heading in the wrong direction and to turn their lives around towards God. And if we think about this metaphor for repentance of turning around, turning around and going in the opposite direction is quite easy if you're walking slowly. But what if you're running full pelt in the wrong direction? Like an athlete at the end of a sprint race, it takes about 50 metres for them to slow down. There's no way they can make an immediate turnaround in mid-flow. And I wonder if sometimes in our lives we are, metaphorically speaking, running fast in the wrong direction. And so the invitation to repent means that first we need to slow down to a standstill, to stop to pause, to reflect and assess where we're at, 
and where our life is heading. Ask some searching questions, make some difficult decisions. Sometimes the circumstances of life bring us to a standstill and provide the space we lacked to even contemplate a change of direction. And for some people, the COVID lockdowns, despite the struggles and heartaches, cause them to think again about where their life is heading and to change direction. Have you ever missed your exit on the motorway? If you're going in the fast lane, trying to get past a lorry and not paying attention to the signs, then before you know it, you're heading at high speed in the wrong direction, miles from where you want to be. Sometimes our lives can end up going in the wrong direction, not because of a deliberate decision, but because we're living life in such a hurry, in the fast lane, missing the signs, oblivious to where our life is heading. Do we need to slow down and read the signs? Recognise that Jesus keeps giving us opportunities to turn around. Is today, in this season of Advent, the next motorway junction, and an opportunity to turn off to the slip road, round the roundabout, stop for a while at the motorway services, and then head in a different direction. So let's prepare the way. Remove the obstacles. Repent and turn around. For the kingdom of heaven has come near to us in Jesus. Let's allow it to come even nearer this Advent and Christmas. John the Baptist, like the prophets of the Old Testament before him, urges us all to prepare the way, for God comes to us in Christ. Will we make him welcome? in time, God.
Let us pray. Lord Christ, John the Baptist spoke of your coming, urging us to prepare the way. Where our motives, our attitudes and our actions and those of our community are pointing in the wrong direction, help us to turn towards the values of your kingdom. In our homes, our neighbourhoods and our world, your kingdom come. Lord Christ, the prophets spoke of your coming to bring justice, compassion and freedom. In all just actions, compassionate acceptance and desire for truth, your kingdom come. Lord Christ, the prophets looked for a renewed earth where desolation would be replaced by abundance. In all active longing to live in your world with love and gentleness, your kingdom come. We offer to God in prayer all those who we are concerned for today in our circle of family and friends, in our communities, in our world. We offer to God in prayer all the challenges of this coming week. And we offer to God in service all that we are and all that we have. Christ of the past, present and future. Help us to prepare to receive you more fully and give us courage to search for your kingdom. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today. We'll close by praying God's blessing over one another and over all who will be watching and listening to this service with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.